Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Empire Total War with the American Civil War mod. I can't exactly remember what happened last time, so I'm not going to recap. Instead, I'm going to go through uh, the current problems that I have, or that we have. Um, so, well, first off, Jackson here, um, he doesn't really have a problem. So, that's great. He's going to be able to get through these guys. He should be able to hit New York. So that's fine. Um, over at Lee, I think the enemy has kind of built up enough troops so that if I attack them here, we'll probably drag in loads of them because I think they've extended the area in which uh, they'll uh, help out uh, friendly armies. Uh, even though you can't see it here, I think they've actually uh, increased it. So even though they've split off everything like idiots, I think if I go ahead and hit this one, We'll probably drag in a lot more of these and it, enough to be like a, a battle battle where it actually will do something compared to just running around defeating all of these. So hopefully that that will kind of be a battle. Over here Sorry. with Beauregard. Beauregard has uh, kind of uh, two choices really. Uh, we have this one which is not the appealing one because we'll have to backtrack and try to cut these guys down which is not my favorite choice uh, so my choice really would be to continue with Beauregard and go for Detroit which they actually have put quite a bit of troops and with Sherman uh, in command of the forces here so the reason why I know this is because I sent up some partisan rangers to scout it I wasn't expecting them to have anything there similar to what's down in Lancaster Ohio um, it turned out they actually had a sizable force, um, a rather sizable force. They, it's not that great compared to what they might have had in the beginning. And over here, uh, it gets even worse for Hood um, because, well, first of all, he wasn't really able to destroy, fully destroy these guys, and now he's faced with rebels. Uh, commanded by McKellen, that turns up, and are steaming r straight for Cheyenne. So, uh, I'm not entirely sure what we'll be doing this episode, but I think we might be able to squeeze in two battles if I'm really quick with this one, which is a rather small one. I can smash that out of the park. And um, I think. We're gonna go just to go and ignore these, and what we'll instead do is we'll just bolster the uh, defenses uh, here and here. Well, actually, this place is probably the one that needs most. But th those have three; these one has five. So this one, I think, has a higher chance of actually uh, staying alive. You know what? Rather than having building cannons, cavalry is probably going to be a bigger decider in those battles being able to swing around the enemy and that will hopefully ensure oh yeah I forgot about this um, there's quite a few troops moving through here however uh, I'm sending over the Stonewall Brigade so three regiments of the Stonewall Brigade it's an elite unit they should be able to smash through anything the Union sends against us. Oh, they have the Pennsylvania Bucktails, which is uh, their own elite unit, but they have one. I have three of Stonewall Brigade. And unfortunately, it's going to take a while for them to actually get up to Stonewall. Um, but I'm pretty sure they will be able to smash these guys. So uh, well, let's go ahead and make our move. This one will go and try to reach the Partisan Rangers, and then we'll attack Detroit. But for now, we'll take Hood, and we will attack uh, these guys. You know what? This is kind of an out-resolve, isn't it? And I kind of want to continue doing bigger battles, so... You know what? We'll out-resolve. Boom. Bye, McKellen. We didn't completely destroy him last. Let's go ahead and enter and see what the enemy does. So they retreat over there. They bring in more troops towards Lee, I think. Or they... I'm not sure what, where they're going. They have all these smaller forces. They move them, though, closer to him. So it should be easier for him to actually smite them. 
Um, and I'm not entirely sure why the Union is using these, suddenly starting using these sort of guerrilla tactics against us. Wait, what, what, what was that? What was that army moving over there? Uh, we're gonna have to resolve this one. But what was that moving? Okay, so, Rabbit Ridge Plantation. What is this? It's a rebel army. Made up a load of... Uh, some sort of militia troop. And they're going against Montreal. Huh. So, it's a confederate rebellion in the Montreal region. Which seems rather strange, doesn't it? James Longstreet. What army did I plan on putting him in charge of? And where the Mississippi, right? Or... Oh yes, I just decided that we were gonna put someone in charge of the Stonewall Brigade troops. Just so I have a general. Uh, so they're gonna attack there. Clearly these guys are going for this place. So hopefully we'll be able to get a howitzer in and some more infantry before they are able to attack. They're burning all the farms and stuff. It's annoying because they're just running around ruining everything. Uh, these guys bypassed Jackson by going up through here and then down and most likely I imagine they're actually going for this capital region. Don't think they will be able to beat us there though. Oh, they actually put some troops here. Gatling gun and Napoleon artillery and some cavalry is holding the river crossing up here. But Jackson should be able to just smash straight through there. I was actually uh, thinking that the enemy would come out of Detroit and attack Beauregard before he got there. So we should be able to attack that pretty soon. Uh, interestingly enough, bloody... Hopefully they'll actually succeed, because then suddenly there's a two-front war, and, but more importantly, I'll be able to... I'll see all that this province can see, so we'll get a visual sort of confirmation of West New York, probably Central New York as well, and some other stuff will be interesting. And also, there's another rebel unit over here, so I don't actually need to declare war on Britain to take Quebec. Which will be very good. Um, right. Hood. Are they still rebels? No, they're not really, are they? So you can now head, get rid of these, and then start getting rid of all of that. So we moved, 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 moved. Right, let's see if we can... Let's see if we can spring into action with Robert E. Lee. And uh, fight some of these idiots. I'm gonna move. Let's see if they intercept us. No, nope, they did not intercept us. We're gonna hit this unit. And. Oh, they are actually going to stand. Which is very interesting. Oh, the 54th Massachusetts. They're gonna be reinforced by 1500 men. Which mm, is not that big of a battle, but apparently it's enough for the the balance meter. Um, enough for me not to want to do this on my own. I imagine it is because of the generals that kind of turn it. Possibly the artillery as well. That kind of turn it. So what generals do they have? They have Hancock, Custer is back, and Chamberlain. And the Chamberlain is actually going in before the 20th Main, which is interesting. Should be quite an easy battle here, just smash this and then take Philadelphia. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and attack, shall we? Right, and here we are at the battle. However, I'm actually recording this uh, during the replay, and the reason for that is when I've finished this video I realized I had recorded about 48 minutes worth of content and cutting out just the the normal parts that I usually cut out the video had still would have been way too long so instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna just focus in on the important parts of the two battles that I did um, 
to say to talk a little bit about this one. This one's very messy uh, because, as you can see, maybe from the map, right now we've got enemies coming in from over there. We've got enemy coming in from over there. Enemies over here, and enemies over here. So enemies all around us. And also, I decided I was going to handicap myself by just using the cavalry, as we can see right here, uh, using them to ride down enemy retreating troops. At this point, my cavalry is actually fighting against some generals. The Union troops decide to charge in, probably encouraged by Custer once more to uh, go ahead and charge in with the three generals that spawn in this battle. Uh, and the important bits in this battle is really the hill battle over here because I'm gonna have quite a bit of a problem dislodging uh, the 20th main and I'm gonna have to put a lot I'm gonna have to put a lot of effort to get rid of the 20th main the thing is Chamberlain has actually a general and he comes I think he's actually the general over here and uh, no, that's Custer there's Chamberlain uh, so he's not actually in command of his regiment. So that's uh, one point. That is, I think these guys are actually the last to uh, fight. No, not entirely. So if you remember when I clicked on attacking this region, I attacked the 54th and they, oh here we go, they're all heading to Uncle Tom's cabin for some reason. They even though they were the ones I attacked first, they are the ones that I'm gonna defeat the last because uh, they're gonna go ahead and hide somewhere and just at the end of the battle they turn up again and we have a fight around the church. So quickly going through here, um, gonna be able to defeat these guys, ride them down with the cavalry. We're gonna have a more difficult time dealing with these guys. So, at first, I didn't even realize the 20th Main were coming over there. So, I was going a half circle to attack these guys. When I realized the 20th Main came up, I didn't want to have my troops in between two units situated up here. So, I fell, uh, sent all the troops back down the hill. Down the hill and hit them behind the stone wall and uh, we can see the troops all along here and we've got the Irish fighting against the 20th main so the 20th main is up on the hill the thing is though the 20th main is an elite unit the Irish are not and the numbers are going to show rather quickly as we see here the uh, Irish are dropping very quickly compared to the uh, to the Union, to the 20th Main, which um, to the point where I actually have to pull these guys back, um, even though they're behind the wall. But I guess it it's um, being behind the wall doesn't work that well if um, if the enemy is actually above you. So the 20th main takes about 50 men casualties while uh, the Irish almost take half the unit. And we're going to pull back this one as well I think or maybe that one retreats. Uh, but we're not going to be able to come back and it's going to take a while before we fight these again. So I think we'll go ahead and take a look at what's going on over here instead. So here rather quickly. We're able to overrun these guys. Uh, they do have two units of sharpshooters putting down fire on me. And they do kind of deploy the cannons, but they get shot to pieces. They have a really small Zwaab unit over here. Completely pointless using them almost. And this unit will, the parrot rifles will actually be able to deploy. Well, no, the howitzers will deploy. And they will be able to fire once which uh, we might see later on. Um, right, so I went ahead and I jumped a little bit in the battle here and we're gonna look at the howitzer shot. 
and just how devastating it is. I mean, look at this gap that was opened up in the unit. Almost half the unit is wiped out in that one one volley of uh, shots. So, I mean, artillery is so devastating in this mod. And, uh, yeah, com almost completely destroyed them. Uh, however, at this point, I've sent in the cavalry. The cannons and all the troops are done for. And at this point, now the uh, 54th Massachusetts decide that now is the time to turn up when the battle is almost lost for them. And now we're back with the 20th Maine. So at this point, the 20th Maine has actually pushed through. Both these units have been forced to retreat. And uh, as a result of me winning over here, I'm sending over troops to deal with them. The thing is, I completely forgot about this. And I'm not going to realize it until we're basically on top of each other. Uh, but I realized it just in time that my men get to fire first. But you can see how close they are. And given that 20th main has like 55 accuracy, you can imagine what happens when they unleash their volley. But luckily for me, I have two units. We're at close range. The 20th main advantage, I mean, you can see, this is just, I mean, it looks as though an artillery piece has blown up the line like we saw down there. But it's just the 20th main massacring this unit. Um, luckily for me, they actually aimed for this unit. So they kind of did a, what, a left oblique a little bit, almost when they should probably have fired on this one, which would have absolutely destroyed it. But yeah, the 20th main was defeated there finally, uh, after having, you know, this completely destroyed part of my army here. So it's a really elite unit, and uh, yeah, they're forced away. You just look, take a look here what they actually accomplished, fighting, shooting down the Irish, and then also shooting down these guys. So absolute destruction. These guys, for some reason, still here. I'm sending in two and uh, second unit to break them. And yeah, at this point, we're rallying. I, at this point, I haven't used the cannons throughout this. Not the cavalry either, not doing any cavalry charge. I chased down this unit over here. That's actually my, one of my units retreating. There. Over there is the cavalry. They chase, chase down one of the enemy. So at this point, I'm just preparing to uh, send my entire force to deal with those um, 54th Massachusetts. So the first that happens in the fight against the uh, 54th Massachusetts is the fact that the my uh, sharpshooters move up uh, They move up a bit too close. So they take ta casualties here. I retreat them put them here the 54th has to advance to actually get at them and uh, Yeah We end up with this where I send my suaves Thinking I'm gonna do a little bit of the Carolian tactic that we saw a lot of in uh, uh, Imperial Destroyer. The Suaves are just, just about to break when they're saved by the fact that they release a volley, kill a load of enemies, and regain their morale. But we're gonna see it from the 54th perspective. So at this point, they're fired all across here the Suaves and the snipers on the right. The snipers are the ones that are actually going to do the most. And we can see here the, the uh, officer, Matthew Broderick, the guy that kind of looks like me or maybe I looks, look like him. Well, usually I always get that when playing Civil War uh, games with uh, face cam. You kind of look like that guy from Glory with the 54th Massachusetts, Matthew Broderick, when he has that curly moustache.
probably should have taught them how to use the cannon. They could could have used the uh, the ten pounder parrot rifles. And there goes the the flag, and the, the unit is no longer uh, ready to hold for battle, and they're retreating. Looks as though Matthew Broderick actually survived. I can't exactly recall what the actual commander is called, but uh, they are forced back, and the battle is won. And here we have the statistics, so I lost a surprisingly high amount of troops, but that, of course, because I handicapped myself not using the artillery. If I'd used the artillery and the cavalry in a better way, then we would have absolutely smashed them. I just noticed this unit. So now I'm... I don't um, think that was kind of a good idea to actually handicap myself. I didn't think they were going to have much more. So they have another unit over there. Why did this one not take part? Or why did that one not break into... We're gonna replenish these guys. And then we'll see about attacking there. Kind of feel as though we probably need some reinforcements in the Washington. And uh, get some more men in Richmond. Oh, I can't pay for anything. Right, next one will probably be here. Let's go ahead and then turn and see what happens, shall we? Right, they put more people. Ah, they're gonna they push forward towards DC now. And they laid a siege. So the second battle will be us defending against an Irish attack on St. Louis. And without further ado, let's go ahead and play this battle. So... The battle was doomed. The battle was really doomed from the start. At this point, the units I had out here has been forced to retreat. So this unit lost um, what? They lost 60, 70, 80 men, and the ones that were fighting lost barely 10 units. So you can kind of get an idea of how that went. Let's go back and take a look here. So these guys, they're sitting here. You can see that they're receiving very much fire. But because they're behind the wall, so much of the enemy fire, which was so successful in pushing the guys in the forest, is not really working against the wall. And this is a regular regiment. 360 men firing everything they've got trying to get rid of these. So at this point, the unit that I pulled back, I put that back up against the wall. Obviously they were defeated by the Irish Brigade. The thing was, I was going to move these up behind the wall, hold the Irish Brigade in place, and have my cavalry swing in. Unfortunately, the AI kind of cheats, Forward! where the unit will still hold like a, a a frontal position where they move look all sort of facing this way but the guns on the units will like swivel around almost to the point where they can do a 360 and shoot uh, something that comes up behind them so there's no way my cavalry is going to be do anything useful in the battle over here by the fact that the AI was kind of weird they moved their troops so close that they're ba I mean, look, they're one like one meter apart from each other, and it's this very brutal fighting, which reminds you of the historical event of what, what is it, Hagerstown Turnpike, where they're basically standing on either side of our road, firing back at the back and forth at each other. But at this point, the uh, Union troops decide, you know what? They're we're going to lose a lot of men unless we actually charge down these guys. And having the worst state militia unit facing off against two regiments of foot. This one is actually a volunteer unit. But this one is a regular foot infantry unit. So you can realize that is not going to work. Imagine the panic on that guy. 
Oh, he missed. He had a misfire. He tried to fix the rifle, and then that guy just punched him right in the face. So these guys gonna give way real soon. The cavalry managed to get the charge in, but as I said, the, the enemy swivels around, and most of the cavalrymen are shot down. Even though the enemy is like looking forward, they swivel around and they shoot him down like they have ice in their necks. Um, soon this unit, this unit right here will soon also fall as we can see the Union has dislodged these guys. They're making lines now and uh, I mean at this point I know the, I kind of know that the game is up. I haven't been able to send a single, well that's wrong actually. I sent the sharpshooters away but other than that I haven't sent a single I think there they are this is the only unit I sent away the sharpshooters so I was able to get those but that's the only one I get and uh, this is kind of I was surprised I actually thought the battle might change here because the Union is sending those two troops to charge and take the house and I thought these guys here being able to get kind of free shots off on these guys that definitely we would be able to uh, win this struggle right here unfortunately for me this unit regular unit just fires so much that we lose so many men and plus the fact that they're engaged with a normal oh it's actually another volunteer unit uh, but it's too much for my men, so they're falling back. So at this point, we're utterly screwed. So I only have two units left. We have the general inside this barn doing their best to uh, try to shoot these guys. I do have kind of a great position right here where my men over here are able to shoot at the Union as they're trying to get inside. So kind of getting free shots. However, a similar situation that occurred on this side occurred here. Because we have one regular unit, the 38, being able to quite quickly massacre my unit. And, I mean, upon this right here, we're gonna have units be uh, regrouping and coming back. So these guys coming back, these guys coming back. I think this one is coming back as well. But the thing is, it's all gone because the commander, the colonel that is in command of all these men or whatever rank he holds, um, he's inside here and I mean you can see the bullets flinging here, they actually shot one of their own. You can see all the bullets coming out of the house and then also the fact that, oh you can't see the flags there, but there's actually three Union units trying to get inside and I mean I kind of like the fact that the guys in the window are able to turn around and turn and shoot at these guys which I think is kind of cool but at this point it's all gone um, the guys in the house they're not gonna be able to uh, survive against all of this fire so uh, it's a basically a done deal and I have lost the province. I'm going to try and get my men into some other houses and try to um, set up a better defense. But problem is the enemy is just putting down so much fire on these houses. The thing about the houses, I mean you think they're great cover and stuff. Uh, there goes the general. Unfortunately, Daryl Langlands. You think they're great cover. But the thing, the one, the, the main thing, there's a problem with the houses, is if the enemy focus down the fire. I mean, the fire you can return is like one guy in each window, so four rifles. Maybe if you extend it to have one side there, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe if you have two in every window, that's eighteen. But they have 360 men all targeting the house. 
and bullets passing by in through the window, hitting someone maybe in the back, is not a great plan. So at this point, the battle is over, and I should have really just, for mercy's sake, I should have told the remaining men to retreat, but we're gonna just have uh, just more men, a few more losses due to me trying my best to hold the town, but it, would o it was all over already. So there we have that, let's jump back to the campaign map and uh, take a look at what happens there. And here we have the statistics, so I thought we would kill more, 675 they killed all of our troops. Uh, and we actually, wait, they lost 675 but we only killed 418. So they killed a lot of their own. State militia, probably the one that was hiding behind the wall, did the most. Vindet cavalry was the worst, only managed to get 8. But it's kind of hard when the enemy troop can swivel around and just turn on a dime and uh, fire at you as you approach from the back of them. Um, state militia there didn't do too well, volunteers didn't do too well. So interesting, the worst unit basically did the most. And unfortunately, we just lost St. Louis, and <laughs> he is he laying siege to my capital now. And we took, we took it. We lost Missouri, and we've got a lot of problems. Oh, I got a town somewhere. Shit, I didn't see where though. So they're just outside of Richmond. They don't got that good troops though. Two turns, we don't have time for that. We're gonna have to um, we're gonna have to get some volunteers um, to hold these places down. Also it looks like uh, Lee's gonna have to move down and take on Chamberlain, where he is regrouped, the 54th. Some other colored infantry and loads of cannons, and we know how bad that's gonna get. Some Buford's cavalry, and they're probably going to re be reinforced by the troops at the harbor. Even more colored troops and a Gatling gun. Yes, sir. So that's actually going to be quite the battle around here. But if I win there, and I win decisively, we can push on, take Philadelphia. Uh, yes, Jackson is in a position to actually cross into uh, the uh, sort of New York region, which is nice. And also, I can notice these places are not garrisoned and the rebel army that managed to take Montreal <laughs> wow give this guy Horrens Bradley give this guy a medal uh, what kind of troops can I recruit here not much uh, state house I will be able to get state militia but if I'm military governance we can actually get some proper troops and we can open up a second front Behind the enemy. Gonna build a church because these are. Um, they are Catholic. We don't like that. And then I think the rebel army. I mean, the best thing would be to just snipe these, thi these places out. I'm gonna take the cavalry though and see what the rebels Anything are doing. More? Oh! The British actually have an army. And they're laying siege to the Native Americans. So we probably shouldn't be here at this point. Right, we're pulling back. Um, you're gonna go ahead and lay siege to this. Sir. Your orders. And we've got a battle there. So we've got one battle there. We've got definitely got a good battle there. Jackson's gonna be able to just run through everything here. So there's no battle. We're gonna have small shitty battles all over as they they push through. And we're gonna have a major problem with them taking back Missouri because it's a military governance province, which means they can recruit a lot of troops. Longstreet's gonna take on these guys, and he's gonna need a lot of reinforcements. So, um, where did all my money go? I, bi oh, yeah, I built up the province, didn't I? Uh, 
question is, maybe he should pull back and wait to recuperate uh, more troops than to try and take these guys on with uh, Grant, Meade and the Pennsylvania Bucktails. So I think we'll actually do a strategic retreat and uh, try again. These guys hopefully going to get rid of them. And there we have it for this episode. So, rather interesting here that part of Canada revolts and joins the Confederacy. So suddenly it becomes a two-front war for the Union. Um, anyway, or oh, three fronts, because we basically have a front through here. A, a eastern front, a western front, and then... I, I wouldn't call this a front, but... We've opened up kind of a front back here. Um, anyways, with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. And hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.